So this is one of Honda's flagship race replica bikes. Napakabilis, napaka aerodynamic, naka Owlins electric suspension, naka full Brembo brake system. Tingnan nga natin kung magkano. Emotional damage! <laughs> Now that particular bike was awesome. That was the Honda CBR 1000 Triple R Fireblade SP mga tol. Pero siyempre, poging pogi din ng presyo. 1.5 million pesos to be exact mga tol. But what if I told you that Honda made a smaller version of that bike? Mas pinaliit na motor, mas pinaliit na makina, at mas pinababa ng presyo. Pero poging pogi pa din. This folks is the baby Fireblade, the 2021 Honda CBR 150R. And this is John Speedship. It's time to go on another bike review. Why you never said you felt that way? Cause you try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray. As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. As you fade away. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay the bike is powered by 149.6cc displacement, single-cylinder engine, liquid-cooled na siya via coolant circulating through a radiator in the front, with fan now, of course. The power is transferred via 6-speed manual transmission with sleeper clutch, which is my favorite feature. Cam siya is dual overhead cams na, with 4 valves. Max power is about 17.1 horsepower at 9,000 RPM. Max torque is about 14.4 Newton meters at 7,000 RPM. Preno sa harap is a 276mm single disc brake with dual piston calipers. Preno naman sa likod is a 220mm single disc brake with a single piston caliper. Tires on the front is an IRC road winner with a size of 100 by 80 by 17. Tires on the rear is also an IRC road winner, but with a size of 130 by 70 by 17. All new for the CBR version 4 is an inverted fork by Showa, which is non-adjustable. And we got a Showa monoshock at the rear with a pro-link system and is adjustable on preload. Fuel capacity is 12 liters. Claimed mileage is 43 kilometers per liter. It has no kill switch, but it has a bank angle sensor which kills the power at 60 degrees. Seat height is a friendly 782 millimeters. Curb weight is a lightweight 137 kilograms. So we got the 2021 Honda CBR 150R here in front of us. So it has a beautiful red paint. Yung length niya halos pareho pa rin ng dati. Yung ergonomics niya is uh, medyo pareho pa rin ng dati. But yung main difference dito guys is this front of the bike no? for 2021 Honda change the fairings sa front natin and of course uh, mapapansin nyo naman we have an inverted fork here so <clears throat> that's new all new for 2021 and the front cross section natin is medyo malapad na siya ng konti so the bike appears to be bigger than a 150cc bike so when it comes to quality of the paint okay na okay yung quality niya guys yung hining niya yung shine of the paint is very good and these are stickers so you can remove this if uh, nire-remove yun po yung sticker nito, actually may nakita ako sa mga forums ito guys, that they remove the stickers and ultimately, the bike just looks like a Italian bike. Parang ano, parang Ducati. Parang panigali. Pagdating sa dimensions natin, so ayun na nga no, medyo may kalakihan tayo sa front dito. Umiba na siya. At uh, yung front niya dito guys, this is a DRL or a daytime running lights. These two. Ito actually yung ano, yung headlights niya, yung sa ilalim, not these things, no. And uh, yung signal lights nito is uh, halos pareho pa rin ng dati, I think. Pero what I like about Honda signal lights is medyo sleek yung ano, sleek yung design nila. Hindi sila kasi yung bulky ng uh, signal lights ng uh, Yamaha. Yung KTM signal lights naman, maganda din yun. Pero mas napopogian ako dito guys sa uh, signal lights ng Honda. And some would argue that these signal lights, sabi nila, bakit hindi na lang nilagay dito? integrate ito. For me naman, some might agree, some might not. I prefer the signal lights being here 
So gusto ko mas malayo sila from each other kasi naman you're gonna be on the highway most of the time para mas visible ka, mas madidistinguish ng mga motorista if nagsisignal ka sa left or sa right. Kasi napapansin ko guys, when I'm using a small scooter like the Honda Beat 110, no? pag yun yung ginagamit ko, yung signal light size is integrated dito. So masyadong malapit yung distansya ng left to right. Yung tendency nun is hindi siya napapansin on the highway. Pero if Honda will integrate the signal lights here sa side mirror, which is quite good, I'm okay with that. Mas, mas better. But I think it will be more expensive. Pagdating naman sa side mirrors natin, I really like the Porma. No? So yung stem ng side mirror natin, ito siya. It's very big. It's aluminum. And it's foldable. Like so. Yun, foldable siya. If you're going to do a track day on this bike, so yun, you can fold those freaking side mirrors. And Di ko napapalitan to. I like it. The lines are good. The size are good. The visibility is obviously very good. On the front natin, we have a radiator here. So the air enters here and obviously cools the engine and the radiator at uh, dito sa taas may cooling fins tayo which uh, draws out the uh, heat from the radiator and the engine as well kasi nag-create siya ng turbulence dito no? for the aerodynamics of the bike natin. No? At saka pagdating sa ilalim dito guys, we also have another big hole here. Nakasa yung uh, I think dalawa up to uh, tatlong kamay ko. No? So I can literally put my hand in here. So also this is for heat management of the engine. Draws out more air here. At saka syempre for aerodynamic purposes din. Yung hindi masyadong sagapak yung hangin. No? So uh, the air can also cool your legs here. So yun yung uh, sa, sa mga reason ng uh, mga butas-butas dito guys. No? So for heat management and of course aerodynamics. At when it comes naman sa fairings ng Honda guys, so ayun, the build quality is very good, hindi siya flexy, it is very very sturdy kasi yung ibang motor masyadong flexy yung fairings nila. So with Honda wala tayong problema dyan, tsaka yung panel gaps niya is very good, it's very tight. And of course we got our rear tail light and signal light. So yun, uh, yung signal lights natin medyo ano, it's also far apart from each other. It's the same kind of signal light sa front natin, tsaka yung ano natin, yung tail light natin no. Oh. Ito na yung itsura niya. Parang Robocop na 90s or 80s, no? But I like it. Tapos yung ano niya, yung dito guys, oh. Yung fairing dito, malaki na din. Naglapad siya ng konti. And when it comes to the engine, ito na, yung power plant natin. So yung power plant natin is halos pareho pa rin ng dati. It's a 149 point something CC na displacement. Pero, at may malaking pero, yung ano niya guys, yung engine mapping niya is halos uh, umiba na compare sa dati. Kasi naman, the bike is quite bigger when it comes to cross-section yung horsepower at saka torque figures niya tumaas ng konti which is quite good kasi they have uh, extract more power from the same reliable engine this is very reliable with the older models halos hindi nasisira and then of course it is liquid gold now with the radiator and the fan which is here circulating permacoolant there and double overhead cam na siya four valves per cylinder which one cylinder lang so four valves what I like about this transmission is meron na siyang slipper clutch so what the slipper clutch does is or what it causes is number one yung clutch feel natin it's so soft that is one of the effects of the slipper clutch pero yung main reason ng slipper clutch is if you're on a high RPM no? tapos for example magda downshift ka ng multiple gears going into a corner fast usually pag walang slipper clutch yan magkakaroon ng abrupt na back torque yung wheel natin kasi syempre naman yung engine brake is very strong with the slipper clutch hindi siya masyadong strong yung engine braking natin kaya nga slipper clutch yung tawag sa kanya because it lets the clutch slip a little bit to the point na mag-match yung RPM ng engine speed natin tsaka yung wheel spin natin dito. So pag nag-match yun sila, yun. Diyan lang mag-100% lock yung engagement ng clutch natin which is very good. Yung slipper clutch is very effective pagdating sa mga race track, race track na yan, no? Sa mga racing, racing, tsaka yung twisties. And then of course, we have to talk about the front suspension kasi yun yung pinakabago dito sa 2021 Honda CBR 150R na to, no? So sa bagong modelo ng motor na to, this has beefy inverted forks. I think nasa 37mm yung uh, diameter ng inverted fork nito. And this is an inverted fork by Showa which is not adjustable. So yung advantage ng uh, inverted fork sa right side up or typical na suspension natin sa front guys no, is uh, other than medyo may konting kapugian siya. Actually, hindi konti. Ang pogi-pogi talaga. Tapos talaga gold niya, no? Yung isang advantage niya is stiffness. 
tsaka yung tinatawag na compliance. So kasi dito, mas malaki yung tubo natin dito sa taas which is directly connected sa handlebars natin, no? So, it tends to be a lot stiffer, no? So, for example, if mag-change direction ka, yung uh, flex ng fork natin is hindi masyado. So, you are going to have a direct feedback sa ground, no? Pag nag-aggressive uh, riding na tayo. So, yun yung isa sa mga main purposes ng uh, inverted fork. That is why halos na MotoGP at mga high-end bikes halos naka-inverted forks na yung uh, gamit nila. So, it's really a good plus that Honda made or put a inverted fork in a 150cc sport bike. Yung naman sa likod, we also have a Showa Mono Shock. Asensya na, medyo dirty yung shock natin. So, this shock is not directly mounted sa swing arm natin. Meron siyang linkage system which is called a pro link system no so one of the advantages ng pro link system is nag-aassist siya sa dumping ng uh, rear swing arm natin so yung isang advantage pa ng uh, linkage system guys no is uh, you can also lower the ride height of the bike no so pwedeng ano yan pwedeng bawasan yung ride height nito pero i suggest wag din ang bawasan guys kasi naman naka-tune na yan nakatono na yan sa ganitong setup eh. and let's talk about the tires here so on the front we got a 110 by 80 na front tire which is a uh, IRC road winner so yun pa lang sa uh, pangalan pa lang panalong panalo na so etong tires ito i think this is semi soft compound kasi ito Parang, parang sticky naman siya. Tsaka tines ko siya sa mga kurbada. Parang okay naman. Parang hindi naman ako natatakot na i-banking-banking siya. And yung likod natin, it has a 130 by 70 na cross-section tire. No? So it might not have the biggest tire in the 150cc segment na sport bike. No? Pero obviously, pwede mong palitan yan. Siguro for me, if uh, papalitan ko to, siguro I'll go with a 140. Max na yun guys. Max na yun. Kasi hindi ko naman gusto na medyo magsobrang bubble yung ano natin. No? Yung bubble yung gulong natin. Kasi yung lean angle is masyadong mataas na. Hindi naman natin maubos yun. Wala naman tayo sa racetrack. Yung mga kalsada na naman natin, hindi naman kasing uh, smooth na uh, nasa racetrack na walang mga bato-bato, walang mga buhangin, tsaka kung, kung ano-ano pa. Minsan nga may lubak pa. No? So, siguro yun lang. 140 is also good for me na no. And of course, we have our seats here. No? So, what I like about seats here is dito. Medyo may kanipisan siya dito para yung uh, paa mo. Yung crutch mo dito, makakapasok ka yung paa mo ng konti. You can stretch your leg beyond the uh, gilid ng motorsiklo natin, no? Tapos yung pagdating dito, may uh, kalaparan siya ng konti pero para may konting uh, comfort naman, no? In the equation of uh, seats, no? Tapos dito, tapered siya. Ito, no? It's designed for your legs. I really like it. And the texture is very good kasi it's kind of rough. So, this will be good for sport riding kasi hindi ka dulas ng dulas sa upuan mo, no? Tapos yung uh, foam niya, for me, is okay. Well, guys, it's a sport bike. Kahit na beginner sport bike siya, you're not... <laughs> expecting na you're going to have comfort seats on a sport bike. Siguro pag uh, adventure bike, siguro comfort seats are a need or a must. And uh, pagdating naman sa passenger seat natin, passenger seat, parang ano yun ah, parang kanta yun ah. <laughs> so anyway, yung passenger seat natin, eto lang. So yung uh, back rider mo, yung puwet niya hanggang uh, may konting ano lang no, may konting uh, area lang for the puwet to be settled in. Tapos, oh my god, this is so hard. Your balls are not going to be very comfortable in this one. Pero, of course, again, let me iterate again. It's a sport bike, guys. It's not an adventure bike. It's not an ADV bike. It's not a scooter. Eh, tsaka, pagdating dito, kung mapapansin nyo, we have a strap here. Alam niyo yung purpose nito, guys. Ba't nilagay nila dito? Kasi, eto, walang grab bar. At baka sabihin nyo dyan, baka may grab bar sa ilalim. Eto, wala. <laughs> Tapos eto, wala rin. So, <laughs> yung Yung ano natin, no? yung uh, OBR natin is uh, walang choice, kundi dito lang siya mag-feeling secure. No? So his or her life will depend on the strap. And of course, on the rider of this motorcycle. So uh, if uh, may papaangkas kayo ng mga girlfriend, asawa kayo dito, this will be quite good. No? Mag-enjoy kayo dito. Not on a long time, obviously, kasi yun na nga, hindi siya comfortable on a long ride, pero pwede na rin. And let's check our U-box. Buksan natin, guys. So this is our key. It took me two arms para buksan yung uh, rear seats natin tsaka U-box natin. So, yun. Yung rear seat tsaka U-box natin. Ito yung, uh, ano yun, yung uh, ilalim ng seat natin. And then, what we have here is a microfiber towel. Tapos, yung papeles. Pwede mong ilagay dyan. Tapos, yun lang. Tapos, okay. Ano yung malalagay natin dito? Siguro, aba, parang maraming kalamansi yung kasa dito ah. Tsaka kamatis. 
sibuyas. And we have here a uh, toolkit dito. Huwag na nating uh, buksan yan kasi it will take time. So let's put it back. Alrighty, so let's go to our features, uh, handlebars natin guys. No? So uh, we have here on our left handlebar, obviously, clutch. Then high chaka low beam, tapos pass through sa lights natin. And of course, a horn which sounds like this. And obviously, signal light na baliktad. Kasi, well, it's Honda. It has to be baliktad. I don't know why. And we have here on our right side, syempre throttle natin, sobrang uh, ano din, lambot din. And our uh, front brake and our start button here, no? So uh, kung mapapansin nyo guys, wala siyang uh, kill switch dito. Pero, at may malaking pero, meron siyang uh, bank angle sensor, no? Which uh, kills the engine pag nag ka na ng sobra ng uh, 60 degrees ng uh, bike mo, no? So uh, siguro hindi ka naman, hindi mo naman ililin ng 60 degrees yun. So, if ever that happens, yun, may auto shutdown feature siya. And of course our gauge cluster let's open it i hope you can see it so we have here tachometer natin rpm meter natin so maximum 10,500 rpm natin or uh, gear indicator so hindi siya naka-display ngayon kasi naka-neutral na naka-neutral siya so so ito yung uh, neutral light natin let's put it into first gear so yun it lights up like so and then we have here our uh, speedometer our uh, odometer i think and fuel time Total. Tapos we have uh, two buttons here. Let's see what this does. Trip A, trip B, kilometers per liter. Reading, okay. Meron din siya. So currently, uh, nasa 42.5 kilometers per liter yung live na reading natin. Kasi uh, previously, ano tayo eh. Uh, hindi tayo nag uh, wal, -wal mode kanina. Naka chill mode lang tayo. So yun, 42.5 kilometers per liter. And here naman, siguro this is for the set button. I don't know. Or something. So the seat height of the bike is around 782 millimeters, and I am about 5'2 and a half in height, and this is what I look like when I sit on this bike. So guys, welcome. This is the riding session of the 2021 Honda CBR 150R. So, uh, unang uh, sakay sa motor na ito. Seating position, I think that, well, it's a sport bike, guys. You're not gonna expect something na magiging comfortable ka dito sa motor na ito, no? Pero anyway, it's not that dedicated na parang super sports talaga siya. As in, like, uh, the KTM RC200 or the uh, Yamaha R6. Medyo may uh, katangkaran ng uh, konti yun yung uh, handlebars niya. Tapos yung upuan niya, it's not that high, nasa 780 plus something millimeter lang. So, uh, I am 5'2 uh, and a half in height. At uh, dati medyo athletic tayo kasi very thin yung uh, profile natin. Ngayong uh, pandemic na ito, I gain about 8 kilograms of uh, mass and weight. <laughs> kasi naman kain ng kain. I gotta tell you, medyo mas nahihirapan ako ng konti stretch out yung mga arms and legs ko sa mga ganitong klaseng uh, motorsiklo. So, uh, sa mga nagtatanong dyan, no? kung uh, okay ba yung uh, CBR o yung ibang mga sport bike sa mga may kakulangan ng height na katulad ko, it's uh, okay and okay guys. Pwedeng-pwede siya. Pero, yung uh, tinatawag na level of effort, syempre, you're going to have to exert a little bit more of an effort pag uh, ano tayo, gumamit tayo ng uh, motor na ito, no? Kasi, yun nga, hindi tayo ganun katangkad. Tulad ng uh, iba dyan na uh, ganun ka-gifted, uh, no? Congratulations sa mga taong matatangkad dyan. And uh, the reach on my arms, like so, is okay din. Hindi siya ganun ka over the stretch yung kamay ko. May pagka uh, upright pa yung uh, position natin. Medyo nanibago lang ng konti kasi I've been uh, riding a uh, scooter for a uh, few years now. Tsaka hindi na rin ako nag uh, bibisikleta kasi sa, bibis sa bisikleta guys, you're gonna have to stretch your body a lot. No? So, noong time, nasanay na sanay ako magbisikleta. It's uh, very easy for me to uh, ride uh, bigger bikes than this. <laughs> Kasi yun nga, nasanay ako na stretch further yung uh, buong katawan ko. So pagdating naman sa traffic, no? So basically yung traffic namin dito is ganito lang, hindi siya ganun ka lala, no? Tulad ng sa Luzon diyan, sa EDSA. So ganito lang yung traffic namin. When it comes to traffic, okay din naman siya. It's not that hot yung makina. Hindi naman siya ganun kangalay. By the way, we have a slipper clutch on this one. Ay, na ilang beses ko na minention yun. At uh, isa sa mga epekto ng uh, slipper clutch natin is yung clutch feel natin, hindi siya ganun katigas. Yung design ng 
yung uh, clutch mechanism niya, hindi niya na kailangan ng uh, mas matigas na clutch spring para kumagat o mag-engage yung clutch natin. That is why na malambot yung uh, clutch feel natin. No? Actually, kahit uh, isang uh, finger o dalawang finger, kayang-kaya siya i-clutch. So, pagdating sa traffic, is okay na okay din siya. No? Of course, I like the side mirrors kasi yung visibility is very good. Then, yung dash natin, I like it also. Even if it's hindi siya malaking um, TFT dash, no? hindi naman ako maarte sa mga ganun. Pagdating sa mga motor kasi, gusto ko yung dash na simple lang. No? Yung malaking porsyento ng ang uh, pressure ng motor ay mapupunta sa mga performance parts. Yung importante sa akin guys, eto, clear, readable. Yun lang talaga. So, as far as eto, okay naman. Readable naman yung RPM natin. Ayan siya. Gear indicator, speed, fuel, kitang kita po. No? <laughs> And then, yung uh, clutch feel natin, yung uh, pagpasok ng cambio natin sa mga gears natin, which is 6 uh, gears pala and 1 uh, down 5 up, is a uh, typical Honda fashion na uh, sobrang smooth, no? Hindi mahirap hanapin yung neutral dito. And then, the brakes. The brakes are good. Hindi siya ganun kalakas. Kayang-kaya siya i-modulate. Although, wala siyang ABS. O, oh, Honda. Ba't walang ABS? For me, walang problema. Pero, yun. I'm saying this as far as uh, everybody is concerned po, no? Yung uh, ibang uh, motorista po. Kasi, majority sa mga motorista natin, mas gusto yung uh, merong uh, ABS. Kasi, para naman uh, may added uh, safety factor sa pag-motor-motor uh, nila, no? And, uh, syempre, yung alam nyo naman, guys, yung mga kalsada natin dito. Minsan, kahit highway na highway, ang daming buhangin, tapos may mga palay pa sa daan, tsaka kung ano-anong debris pa, yung mga buslot-buslot pa sa daan, it will really help you if meron tayong uh, additional na ano na safety feature pagdating nung panahon na hindi ka na makakafocus ng uh, grabe, no? Kasi not all the time naman, 100% yung focus natin sa pag-motor uh, kasi minsan pagod tayo, may problema tayo, so yung ABS is uh, nakakatulong talaga. Tapos yung uh, lane filtering sa motor na ito, like so, hindi siya ganun kahirap guys kasi kasi yun nga ang gaan ng motor nito na nasa 137 kilograms lang the weightlessness of this motorcycle translates to more of an agile ride so, lalo na pag uh, city driving although hindi siya kasing agile ng uh, scooter kasi yun na uh, yung comfort ng scooter lalo na yung NMAX ibang level yung comfort nun no? yung anibela nun medyo may kataasan ng konti you're not gonna be uh, crouching on the bike Most of the time like this, by the way, the engine is good. The response is uh, okay na okay din for a 150cc na makina. Pretty tight dito. So, uh, handling, test. So, yun. <laughs> Very predictable naman yung handling niya. Kahit yung nasa paligid mo ay hindi masyadong predictable. <laughs> Woo! That was fun. I did not have uh, any particular mischiefs sa motor na ito. <laughs> so, uh, kudos to the gearbox. Oh! May crane. <laughs> hindi tayo makakapagdaan dito. Okay. Doon tayo sa kabila. So, ayun. Uh, as far as ergonomics is concerned, for a sport bike, okay na okay siya. Hindi siya ganun kahirap i-maneuver sa traffic, no? So, if mapapansin nyo, guys, eto yung height ng seat niya. Tapos, eto yung handlebar. The handlebar is about a few inches uh, higher than our seat, no? So, walang problema yan. Let's get it on. Try tayo ulit. Oh, my God. This is quite high. Considering na nasanay tayo sa e-scooter, no? <laughs> Dito tayo dadaan kasi exit dun. Hmm. May crane sa kabila. Tapos, may crane din sa kabila. Okay. <laughs> Wag tayo dadaan dyan. Baka malaglagan tayo ng uh, debris, no? Ng bato. <laughs> We don't wanna scratch this bike or our head. So, yung uh, tawag dito, yung ano ng motor na ito, yung turning radius niya, is okay din. Pwede siyang i-U-turn sa kalsada na medyo may kaliitan. Yun lang nga, compare mo sa scooter, hindi ganun ka okay yung turning radius niya. Pero for a sport bike, <laughs> Okay na okay. Woohoo! Okay na okay yung turning radius niya for a sport bike, man. Woo! Acceleration is very good, ah. Huh? All right. Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! 
Excuse me po, kuya. <laughs> so that was a uh, demonstration ng uh, power ng uh, motor na ito, no? The engine is very good. The power is very linear. Hindi siya ganun ka-abrupt, no? Katulad ng mga two-cylinder, tsaka four-cylinder na motor. Na pagdating mo sa certain RPM, mga 5,000, 7,000, 6,000, the power is from here to way up there, no? Hindi siya ganun ka-unpredictable. It is uh, very linear. Pwedeng-pwede sa beginner. Pwede siya sa beginner, pero at the same time, mabilis din siya, guys. So, kung ikaw yung uh, isa sa mga rider na naghahanap ng trail, no? Naghahanap ka ng trail sa buhay mo, no? <laughs> pero at the same time, hindi mo gusto yung uh, malaking motor kasi nga, ang mahal-mahal na ng gasolina ngayon. This is the bike for you, man. So the bike's uh, RPM limit is about 10,500 RPM. Napakalinear ng uh, power delivery niya. Pag sinabi natin linear, simula sa lower RPM, papunta sa RPM na may kataasan, no? hindi siya ganun ka-abrupt na, oh, let's make the side mirror there. Hindi siya ganun ka-abrupt na parang uh, magsaspike lang siya. No? So very linear, very predictable, very good for beginners. Alright! Yung park on this bike is very good! <laughs> So, if makikita nyo, yung 0 to 100 km per hour niya, siguro may kabilisan na naman ng konti. Oh, ang ganda ng daan dito ah! 6 <laughs> gear, 123 km per hour, at uh, meron pa tayong uh, 3,000 RPM left before uh, maglilimit siya. So, yun na. Palalampasin muna natin sila. 0 to 100 km per hour. So pagdating naman sa high speed stability, I believe that this uh, chassis and the suspension and the overall package as a sport bike delivers very well. Pag sinabi natin delivers very well, it is very stable for what it is. For a 150cc sport bike, stable siya ha. Siyempre, sport bike, you're gonna have a fairings dito sa harap natin. Isa sa mga magandang uh, nangyari sa 2021 uh, CBR 150R guys, no? Is uh, medyo may kalagihan na ng konti. Yung fairings natin sa harap, no? So what that does is, other than uh, maganda siya tingnan for a 150cc sport bike, no? Uh, yung uh, kalakihan ng cross-section ng uh, fairings sa harap is uh, may contribution contribution din sa aerodynamics niya. Bakit? Kasi the more surface area is on the front, the more wind is gonna be displaced no, away from the rider. So uh, pagdating sa mga long rides, pag mga ganun yung steady na pacing o oh guys, no, hindi ka masyadong mafafatig dito. Kasi yun nga eh, yung uh, hangin, hindi masyadong uh, ano sa'yo. Hindi masyadong uh, sagapak ba? Tapos yung windscreen na ito, it's very, very handy at saka helpful. Semi uh, bubble windscreen tayo. Sige kuya, pasok kayo. Hmm. E-bike. At uh, yung windscreen na ito ay uh, nakaka-contribute din sa pag uh, ano natin ng uh, um, displays ng maraming hangin. At saka kung gusto mo mag racing racing mode, no? If you're gonna tuck in like this, like so, you're gonna have uh, more ano, area to tuck in with. And talk about e-bikes, no? So, yun. Uh, pagdating sa e-bikes, as uh, Ah, uh, yun nga yung isa sa mga talk of the town ngayon, yung mahal na mahal na gasolina. And uh, this being 43 kilometers per liter on a good day, on a very fun and a good day, no? 
is very good kasi uh, you're gonna have more range no hindi ka masyadong mag-worry sa gasolina mo nito kasi yun na nga no 43 kilometers per liter I believe meron siyang uh, live dito na fuel uh, computation or mileage so ngayon if makikita niyo yung pinagdaanan natin it's a mix of a slow moving traffic at konting walwalan mode no konti lang konti lang yung walwalan mode doon nasa 20% lang so yung live reading niya yung fuel consumption natin is about 42.5 kilometers per liter which is quite good ah for a bike just fun and fast it's quite good for me for me I don't know about you guys but for me it's uh, okay na okay na ito let's talk about its uh, suspension yung front natin is a 37mm inverted fork which is good ang pag uh, tono po ng uh, suspension nila ay uh, hindi siya kasing tigas ng uh, truck bike so it is medyo softly sprung syempre this is a uh, street bike kahit na sport bike siya malaking porsyento ng uh, riding environment mo dito is uh, sa kalsada so syempre Honda also took into consideration yung uh, mga factor na doon pero if this was my bike pa tataasan ko ng konti yung preload sa likod it's uh, too soft for me for my like at saka for my needs kasi may uh, OBR tayo so uh, that is also another thing that uh, you need to consider kasi yung uh, weight niyo ng OBR niyo it will uh, really compress the uh, rear suspension at uh, pag hindi hindi, hindi kataasan yung preload mo wala siyang masyadong resistance let's get gas on this one guys Good oh. afternoon. Marketing team. Anong yung market ang uh, mahalaga sila na? <laughs> so, uh, the gas on this is uh, 95 octane na uh, gasolina. Kasi isa itong uh, modernong uh, motorcyclo na may compression ratio na may kataasan ng konti. So, 95 octane. At uh, by the way, it doesn't have a uh, side stand kill switch. Naka side stand pa ako. Then, uh, I uh, started the bike. At kung mapapansin nyo, on my right, wala siyang uh, kill switch. Kasi sabi ng Honda, meron siyang tank angle sensor. So, pag lumampas ka ng 60 degrees yung banking banking mo, which is too much, kusang mamamatay yung motor. Off-road test of the CBR. <laughs> John, it's a sport bike. Why do you need to uh, ride it off-road? To demonstrate sa inyo, no? Kasi, karamihan ng mga kalsada dito sa atin sa Pilipinas is uh, off-road pa. So, definitely, hindi hindi mo maiiwasan na papasok ka sa ganitong klaseng lugar, no? Lalong-lalo na sa mga area na probinsya, di ba? So, when it comes to the off-road, the suspension is quite okay. Soaks uh, these uh, small bumps quite well. At syempre, yung uh, motor na ito, guys, you're gonna be stretching your body a lot more. So, yun, yung fatigue dito pag nag-off-road ka. Grabe. Hindi siya advisable na i-off-road. Pero what I'm saying is pwede siya. But not all the time guys. Pero if wala ka talaga ng choice kasi hindi naman tayo pinapalad na maraming uh, motor sa buhay natin. Minsan talaga yung uh, motor natin no, is uh, mag-isa lang. So you can't take this off-road. Hindi lang yung super brutal talaga na off-road. No? <laughs> For beginners, can you take this off-road? I would not advise it. Kasi uh, mas marami ka pang uh, bagay na kailangan matutunan dito sa kalsada muna bago mo i-off-road. I think this could be a lot to handle for a, a beginner all right oh look at the view oh sarap naman oh <laughs> welcome to roja city guys roja city skyline so we have the bike here my counting dumi na siya the cbr 150r we've uh, off-roaded this bike for a little bit dito sa in-off-road natin e, yung tawag dito is the sacred hearts of jesus shrine statue na ito guys no? this is one of the biggest statues of uh, jesus christ in the world no medyo light lang yung off-road dito although may kataasan siya ng konti yung mga nagbibisikleta kayang-kaya ano iakyat yung portion na ito ng bayan namin if you ask me ito si BR can go off-road it can not advisable but if you need to it can descent <laughs> by the way no share ko lang grabe pala no pag uh, nag uh, de descent tayo sa off road lalo na yung slippery yung uh, descents no <laughs> nakakakilabot pag sport bike yung dala mo kasi eh, medyo stretch yung uh, arms mo tapos yung legs mo hindi siya masyadong makakapag uh, ano sa ground kasi eh, medyo may konting uh, kataasan siya medyo sketchy yung feeling if you're gonna take this uh, on a descent no lalo na sa mga ganitong uh, mga no, slippery Be very, very careful on that one. Whoop, whoop. Oh my God. 
<laughs> but siempre, it is heart pumping. <laughs> so the descent is very bad. The ascent is okay lang. Oh my God! Oh, oh, careful! It's very slippery. Yung bato ang daming buhangin dust sa particles. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, careful! Ah, ah, ah. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> Alright, do I recommend this to a beginner rider? Of course! Will you recommend a sport bike to a beginner rider? Well, marami naman kasing beginner rider eh. Iba-iba yung uh, reason nila kung bakit uh, magmumotor sila, no? Yung ibang reason naman ng uh, ibang beginner rider is uh, to take them, no? Sa pag-umpisa sa world of uh, motorcycling. So definitely, leisure yung hinahanap nila sa isang motor. Pero with a sense of practicality, no? Magaan yung motor, hindi siya gaano kagrabe i-maintenance, konsumo niya sa gas, Okay din. At saka masyadong basic yung lahat ng function ng motor na ito. No? A beginner rider would definitely learn a lot on this bike. Meron naman yung beginner rider na dinidaily yung uh, kanilang motor. No? Yung pang-araw-araw nila. For example, ako, if I were to choose, this will be my pang-araw-araw na motorsiklo sa mga errands natin. Kasi yun na nga eh. Formado naman. Practical naman ng konti. As long as may backpack ka. Tapos when it comes to long ride no? at uh, pormahan, performance, pwedeng-pwede din. Definitely, a beginner rider would have something in mind muna, no? Bago sila bibili ng motor. At uh, syempre, eh, Honda, no? Walang masyadong iti-tweak dito, no? Pag uh, all stock tayo. Yung isang problema lang siguro sa Honda, guys, is uh, wala siyang masyadong ano, aftermarket parts. Which I don't mind, no? I would like uh, my bike to last from the past lessons learned. Siguro mas uh, importante na sa akin ngayon yung longevity ng uh, motor natin kaysa sa added performance. Kung nabibiti nga na sa power ng uh, small bike mo, syempre, mag big bike ka. Pero hindi ko naman sinasabing ano, hindi ko naman sinasabing uh, we have a problem sa pag set up at saka pag modify ng motor. Nasa sayo din naman yun, no? kung ano yung uh, mga trip mo at gagawin mo. It's your bike. Your bike, your decisions. <laughs> diba? <laughs> Woo! Barko! Now, when it comes to the Honda CBR, familiar tayo dyan eh. Nag-review tayo ng motor na ito way back 2019. And I gotta tell ya, Honda came a long way with the current version, performance, and aesthetic-wise. Pagdating kasi sa mga disenyo ng motor nila, pansin ko lang that Honda's always holding back. Alam mo yung feeling na kaya naman nilang ibigay, pero pinipigilan yung gigil. Medyo konservatibo, so to speak. But now, I'm starting to like their design language, which appeals more to the younger demographic of motorcycle enthusiasts. With the 150cc sport bike segment being so competitive, sometimes it's just hard to choose. The CBR's direct competitors are the Yamaha R15 and the Suzuki GSX-R150. With all the three bikes being Japanese origin, sa reliability ay uh, wala na tayong kailangan ipag-worry dyan. Sa itsura naman ay syempre ikaw na yung pipili. After all, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Specs and equipment-wise, the Yamaha R15 outperforms the two bikes with the additional ABS, riding modes, traction control, at iba pa. Pero, kitang-kita naman sa presyo yung dinagdag. Ang Suzuki GSX R150 naman ay ang pinakamura sa kanila, but not that much, considering na siya na lang yung hindi na converting fork sa kanila. But don't ever underestimate this bike. With the sleek and thin bodywork and the same engine as the Suzuki Raider 150, panigurado'ng mabilis yan. Ang Honda CBR150 naman ay nasa gitna lang ng tatlong motor na ito in terms of price point. At isa pang kailangan natin i-mention dito is the fact that the CBR has two less horsepower than the other bikes. Pero sa akin lang ha, yung horsepower, sa top end mo lang naman kailangan yan eh. And I'm not a top speed kind of guy. What I want in a bike is more torque para swabing swabe yung acceleration. Although halos pareho lang sila ng torque figure ng tatlong motor na ito, the CBR's torque comes in way more early into the rev range. At syempre, kailangan din natin consider yung build quality at refinement ng mga motor na ito. Siguro sa kategory na yan ay hinding-hindi magpapatalo yung Honda dyan. I mean, sometimes you just want your bike to last longer, di ba? Pero syempre, sa nag-aalaga din naman yan. But it helps if the brands got an astounding build quality. Sa panahon ngayon na sobrang mahal na ng gasolina, the 150cc displacement segment really does make sense from a financial point of view. But I'm not saying that these bikes are slow. Para sa 150cc na size ng makina, they really pack a lot more punch than expected. Sport ergonomics na din, kaya pwedeng-pwedeng mag-feeling Marquez on the twisties. Huwag lang yung sobrang kamote type. May fairings na din, kaya hindi ka masyadong masistress sa headwinds on those long and fast stretches of roads. Going from point A to point B has never been this stylish, practical, and financially doable as a daily bike. So kung tatanungin mo ko ulit if this bike makes sense, 
Aba, yes na yes tayo dyan. Alright, so what a spy conclusion sa motor na ito, no? Would I recommend this to a beginner? I said it again. I would recommend it to a beginner. Yung conclusion ko dito is uh, for a specific price of uh, this number down below kasi nakalimutan ko, no? Meron ka ng isang sport bike. Isang sport bike na formado. Maporma talaga, wala akong masabi. Performance niya is very, very excellent. While the performance is excellent, the reliability of Honda is uh, well known, no? which is quite good. Well guys, it's a Honda. Reliability will always be good. And saka a build quality that's very excellent. Para sa akin, this bike is one of the pinakasulit na motor sa kanyang uh, kategorya considering na hindi siya yung uh, pinakamabilis no? when it comes to the top end no? ng uh, ibang motorsiklo kasi we have the GSX-R 150 and we also have the Yamaha R15 which are all fast motorcycles pero kung ako naman when it comes to power delivery and reliability siguro dito na ako guys forma reliability performance handling after sale service in the long run pwedeng pwede itong motor na to at saka matipid na din right so that wraps up our review for today the 2021 Honda CBR 150R and a quick shout out pala no, sa cousin ko si JC John Carlton for letting me lend his bike to review on Carl thank you sa iyo no bye guys this is John Spaceship and I'll see you on the next one ciao Woohoo! <laughs>